Hello, hello. Is there anyone in there? Yes. How yes. Are you? I'm great. How you doing? I feel great. Well, that's you should feel great. <laughs> the only thing is, is that I'm a little jealous that you're that thin. <laughs> you know, I have three kids, Scott, and you know what that's like. They keep me thin. I'll tell you, it's just amazing. You've always looked great, and uh, you've been a friend of rock, and here you are on the world of rock, and we got a lot to talk about because you're going to be our, our special guest and uh, co-host, and you're going to get to play disc jockey and... We get so much to talk about because I haven't seen you. You guys collectively now have just collected a platinum album. Is that true? That's true, yes. That was, uh, we got that before Christmas. <laughs> American Dream. Nice title and well it should be. You guys have uh, continued to lead separate lives, which we'll talk about during the time. All right now I'd like to talk about Graham Nash and uh, your life because I know each one of you involves yourself in songwriting and in... Uh, making records, and sometimes it's collectively. This is the first time that actually the group, what, uh, how many years has it been? About 15, 16? Uh, let me see. No, we've been playing together since, what, 68? Well, yeah, but I mean the album oh, together. Oh, the first album in 15 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, boy, it sure worked all right. Everybody brought their songs in, and they get it together. It, and... was, a, it was a very interesting experience. I must say I was a little apprehensive at first as to, you know, how we would uh, treat each other and how we would, re would react to each other and how open we would be to let other members of the uh, of the foursome, you know, make suggestions and, and mold the songs. And I thought, uh, I thought it was a pretty uh, nice piece of work. It was a great piece of work. You know, it's easier for me as an outsider and, you know, having been there at the beginning and then knowing each one of you individually and watching your individual careers in different directions and the low points and the high points and all that. It's its more than curious. It really is, you know. It's a... Well, that's why the album was called American Dream because if, if anybody has lived it, I think the four of us have. You certainly have. Yeah, and, and it is aptly titled. You know, the, the, you know, one of the problems with working, you know, with three or four of us is that because there are such strong writers within the, the group, we can only do two, three of each other's tunes per album. And of course, we write much more than that. So what do you do with those songs, you know? We have to make solo records out of a sense of survival, I think. Well, listen, I have you here as a co-host and guest and disc jockey on the World of Rock. So I know you've written a couple of songs on American Dream, as everybody did, and maybe... Uh, I should have you do one of those now, but you have to do it yourself. You have to introduce the song and talk about it. Okay. Let me talk about uh, Soldiers of Peace. All right. Soldiers of Peace started as an idea when a friend of mine who's a filmmaker here in Los Angeles told me that he, he, his idea was to take Vietnam vets down to Nicaragua and film the conversations between the old vets and the new vets. And I thought it was such a wonderful idea, you know, the exchange of information between the vets that uh, fought in Vietnam and the vets that are now kind of, but not, you know, fighting in Nicaragua. And uh, I think about an hour after the conversation, the song was written. I wrote it with my friend Craig Durge and uh, my friend Joe Vitale. Wow, that's, uh, well, it says a lot, doesn't it, that Soldiers of Peace? Yeah, I, I like it myself. I, I think I hit something on the head right there. Well, let's hope it continues to happen for, uh, you know, I guess Central America or wherever we're talking about. That could apply to anybody, really. It certainly does, and, it, you know, it's, some, it's certainly something to think about. That song, when uh, when Crosby, Stills, and Nash last toured, was given a standing ovation every night for a brand-new song, and that was very encouraging as a writer to know that it was that well-received because you must understand, of course, that normally, you know, things get standing ovations only after they become classics, you know. Yeah, that is true. I mean, something that everybody would know you from from a long time and over a period of years, and everybody's singing along with it. And, you know, the they, Hollies, the Hollies are enjoying a huge success right now in England. Did you know that? Yes, they are doing the revival now. You know, that's your roots, Graham Nash. I mean, uh, you certainly spent a lot of time uh, <laughs> writing and performing with the Hollies. And let's go back a little in your youth now. Let's go back to that. Uh, those holly days. Okay, I'm smiling, and I, I, <laughs> I, I, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, actually, I gotta tell everybody who hasn't seen you that you really still look like a kid, so it shouldn't be hard for you to put it in reverse a little and... That's for sure. ...and go back to the Hollies, because I, I think, you know, if I have to do a quick interpretation of the songs, they were fun. Right, exactly. They were fun three-minute pop songs that were not very deep philosophically, but uh, certainly fun. Well, why don't you play disc jockey and do one for us? Tell us something about one of those songs. Okay, how about um, the first time that we ever came to New York in the mid-60s, we were uh, playing at the New York Paramount on the Soupy Sales Extravaganza with people like Little Richard and Jimi Hendrix and uh, a bunch of, you know, Shirley Ellis, a bunch of great people for, for Morris Levy, as a matter of fact. And... Morris one day invited the Hollies to dinner, and so we went down to a restaurant called The Round Table. And that night, the curtains opened and the lights went down, and there was this wonderful belly dancer, this Turkish beauty, right. and she w was quite um, impressive, <laughs> to say the least. And the Hollies went home and uh, later wrote the song Stop, 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 so why don't we play that? Stop, Stop, Stop by the Hollies. Well, we've had a little Holly's history, and our special guest here on the World of Rock is Graham Nash, who's celebrating the platinum status, platinum plus now, of American Dream, as the guys all got together. Uh, I mean by the guys, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. And uh, now each one of the guys is off in his own direction, including you. Yes, once again. I understand there's the possibility CSN and Y might do something. You know, the feeling between us was pretty good. I must tell you that we related to each other uh, on a much more mature level, and we were uh, far more considerate of each other and uh, far more compassionate with each other's music. Um, it would not surprise me if uh, somebody made the call and we all went back. Yeah, I could really see it. Maybe I, you know, Crosby uh, has his book and is doing a solo thing. And, and uh, he's doing very well, though. Yeah. And uh, Neil has been into that mode for quite a while. Right. Uh, but I would think that, uh, yeah, you're probably right. If someone called for the right thing, I think everybody might do it, right? Yeah, I believe so. You know, we, we, need, we all need to be uh, healthy and strong because we certainly don't want to uh, give the appearance of being couch potatoes in the, in the 80s. You know, we, I mean, we, I believe we still have a lot to say. We still have a great passion for the music, and if the environment and the atmosphere is right, I can see us doing it again. I'd love to tour myself. The main thing with you now is uh, to keep writing and keep active, and you certainly are. Uh, while we uh, have you as our special guest on the World of Rock and we're spotlighting the success of American Dream, why don't you pick another song that you wrote in there and uh, introduce us to it? Uh, okay, let me, uh, let's play Shadowland. Okay. Shadowland and Soldiers of Peace were written in the same week, and they're very, uh, very much connected. And Shadowland is the place which uh, the governments of the world always seem to drag their people without their consent into the steamy, foul-smelling jungles of the world uh, to kill people for who knows what kind of a reason. And this song, uh, Shadowland, was written... Uh, based on a set of lyrics by uh, a friend of mine called Rick Ryan, who sent me this uh, pages of lyrics that I honed down and added to and edited. And uh, my friend and I, Joe Vitale, and I wrote the music. This is Shadowland from the American Dream album. Our special guest on the World of Rock this week is Graham Nash. Graham, you know, I don't like to bring this up, but the 20th... You're going to say the W word, aren't you? Scott? Yeah, the Woodstock anniversary is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> God, that was something, wasn't it? Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's no one that was involved in any way, shape, or form that can forget that, nor can it ever be duplicated again. No, you know? I don't think so. I think a lot of people are certainly going to try to duplicate no. it, but I don't think it can be duplicated. I think the closest was Live Aid, and that moved into the uh, the, the technical area, meaning yes. that uh, we were able to talk to like a billion and a half people and sing to them throughout the world at the same time. It was magnificent. Yeah, so I'm not so sure how all these Woodstock things are going to go. I certainly uh, think that it has become a victim to the myth of it all. I mean, I think I must have met everybody that went to Woodstock. I think everybody, you know, that I've ever met tells me they were at Woodstock. <laughs> I think it was a, a place and an event that is unduplicatable. Okay. So there we were, 
four of us in New York City. We just played at the uh, Opera House in Chicago. Joni was opening for us, and we were in New York together. And Elliot, our manager, and Joni's manager, decided that Joni should stay in town because she had to do the Dick Cavett show. And so Joni didn't go, but she managed to write uh, the song Woodstock basically on the media and the information that these four babbling musicians gave to her. So let's play Woodstock right now by Joni Mitchell, sung by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Our guest on the World of Rock this week is Graham Nash. And Graham, you're steeped in history of great songs that you've given us, things that mean something to everybody from uh, Wasted on the Way, Teach Your Children, Our House, Immigration. Uh, our House, what a, what a pretty song. Yeah, yes, it's Even gorgeous. If I say so myself. That was written for Joni. We were living together in Laurel Canyon in 1970. It still makes me feel good to sing it, strangely enough. You know, I very often don't like to sing uh, my songs, you know, f forever and ever and ever. But Our House is very special to me. Joni meant a great deal to me. She's a wonderful writer, a wonderful artist, and a, and a fabulous person. Uh, let's play Our House. Wow, there's a, a perfect Graham Nash lesson in songwriting, Our House and Teach Your Children. <laughs> uh, teach Your Children, Crosby's father's favorite song. Speaking of Crosby now, that alliance, you and Crosby doing an album together, how, where are we at on that? Uh, we're nine tracks into it. We want to record about 15 tracks, so we have a good choice. Mm -hmm. We're very happy with it, and uh, Crosby's, of course, on the road right now, so we're not working on it exactly right now, but he comes back, and, he, and as soon as he finishes off the tour, we're going to go back into the studio and complete the record. Oh, uh, that sounds... You know, it's been, you know, can I do something here? Can I make a left turn and play something off Crosby's record? I think that'd be great. You're the disc jockey. I mean, it's your uh, job to do that. I'd like to play uh, something that uh, Crosby and myself and Michael Hedges, who is a wonderful, wonderful acoustic guitar player, who uh, people should go and see any chance they can get, and John David Souther, who's been a friend of ours for years. We did a song on Crosby's album called My Country Tis of Thee. And Crosby, you know, not a lot of people realize that he, truly, as I do, deeply love this country and thankful that we're able to be here and speak our minds and maybe uh, hopefully affect our future. And this particular song makes me feel very warm. It's great memories for me. Let's play My Country Tis of Thee from Crosby's album, Oh Yes I Can. Well, we have had just a wonderful time here. Part of the American dream is Graham Nash and that album. And you guys got it together and... Now you're doing a thing with uh, Crosby. I think it's wonderful. The main thing is, is you're active, so I'm sure that at home you're getting that adrenaline, right? Well, you know, my wife and family uh, have done wonders in keeping my feet uh, on the ground uh, and keeping me on my toes at the same time. I learned so much through the eyes of my children, and I'm taught so much by my wife, Susan. I'm very grateful for their love and their energy. Uh, it's one of the reasons, you know... I. In a way, I, being a writer, I, I, I can get away with things, you know. I mean, I don't think that we tell each other that we love each other enough, you know, as human beings. I don't, I don't think that, we, uh, that that's something we concentrate on enough. But as a writer, I can uh, put a beautiful song together and maybe it'll tide me over and she'll let me stay at home for another year, you know. So uh, let's play Don't Say Goodbye. I wrote this for Susan. I love it dearly and I think it's a fine song. Well, our special guest this week, uh, we've had a wonderful time with some great music. Uh, Graham Nash, I want to thank you for spending the time here on the World of Rock. We're going all over America with this, and we've been able to share American dreams, some holly memories, and and some good songs. And we have uh, an album with you and uh, Crosby uh, set to get finished pretty soon. We'll be looking forward to that. I don't know what more we could ask. Well, you know what? I, I, it seems that I've been talking to you for years, Scott, you know? Uh, you've always been a very good friend to us. You've always been a great friend to, to rock and roll music, and uh, America should be very proud of you, my friends, and I mean that sincerely. Well, we're proud of you, and one of the things we like to do every week is uh, share our music, and I, I love talking to you, and look forward real soon. Guess what we'll be talking about? That album that you're working on with David. <laughs> yeah, maybe when we come to New York, we can drop in as we normally do and, and chew the fat. All right, you got it. My best to you and the family, and uh, thanks a lot for sharing your time with all of us here on the World of Rock. I appreciate it, Scott. Thank you very much. You've been doing, uh, aside from all the other things uh, musically, 
should tell everybody that you've been involved too with the, uh, uh, I guess the easiest thing to say is the children of the world, which we do around Thanksgiving time. That's and right. Which you do year round. Yes, uh, it's been a wonderful experience and I do uh, believe that we've helped spread the word about the, uh, the uh, amazing amount of children that die uh, every, every single day from uh, seven major diseases that we could cure them of with a, you know, inoculation that costs about five bucks. So we've um, we've we've uh, raised about maybe six hundred thousand dollars so far in the uh, in the couple of years that we've been doing it. Well, that's what it's going to take. We all got to be a little more alert of what is around us, don't we? Yes, we do. We have to realize that the world is indeed a very small place. I, you know, I know you as a different type of person, but then you are. So is Neil, you know. So is Crosby. It's amazing know. to me that that uh, that four such diverse people can can uh, can you know come together and make a common music. You know, I was thinking about that, and you said it diverse, but actually, and in all truthfulness too, you know, I look at groups, the other groups that are around that are now coming back together. You know, the Who will be on tour, and the Stones will be on tour. Right. And in a sense, now that you know that we've had the time to listen to them separately and and to see people in their individual ways and then know them collectively from the beginning and know where they are now, I think that is true. Maybe that's what makes the chemistry happen. I I think so. It's an explosive chemistry for sure, but I think that's exactly correct. And probably what uh, this would not necessarily make a long and happy marriage and so that it's good that uh, the members go their their ways and do their own projects too. Yeah. But it's fun to get back together. It certainly is. Well, now you've always been uh, a, you love to write. Now, do you ever? I'll ask you as Graham Nash. Now, this is just for you. What about a song? If you write a song and you say, "Wow, this song," you know who would really be good? Would you take your song to somebody? I yes, mean, I think so. Like right now, suppose that. You decided, okay, you're not going to be on tour, and uh, you're not going to do this thing for a while, or you're not going to do that thing for a while, but you'd like to go to somebody and maybe help produce a, a song? Yep, I, that's, that's happening uh, a lot more in my life. You know, I, I kind of shy away from producing. It takes up so much time, and, and uh, you know, I, I need, you know, my greatest commodity nowadays, as you probably well appreciate, is time. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not going on the road this year at all for the first time in, in God knows how many years, because I need time to to work another side of of my creative muscle. This year, it's going to be uh, computers and graphics and video for me. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Do you know, um, well, you're keeping in touch with the other guys, but we were talking about Crosby's book. Is it true that Steve Stills is writing a book? You know, Stephen has been writing for for many years. You know, the last thing that I saw of Stephen's was a a, a novel about... uh, uh, somebody in the military. I did not. So that that may be what you're you're referring to. Uh-huh. I didn't know that he, uh, but I wouldn't put it past him to uh, to be writing an autobiography. Well, I uh, the the book that we were talking about before is uh, a chiller uh, because someone was along uh, with Crosby to record a lot of the events that he now talks openly about and uh, how lucky he is to be alive. And I think... Uh, we, are, we are all lucky to Yeah, be alive. we really are. And uh, especially, I think it was uh, it was well-timed. I think it's an excellent book, and I think people should read it to... Uh, it certainly gives great hope for anybody out there yeah. that, is, uh, that is addicted to either alcohol or drugs. I mean, Crosby was so far down. When you're in solitary confinement in a, in a Texas jail... Uh, that isn't much further down you can go. That's a bottom. They say there, everybody hits a bottom. Boy, that's a low one. That's... But Crosby made it back, and his life yes, he... turned around, and it's positive, and he's writing and feeling great. He's on tour. His and... books are success. The records are success. Yeah. And David and I are in the middle of an album right now. Oh, great. Yep. And uh, one thing about it, he's not bashful. He's able oh. to talk and talk plenty. Well, you've plenty. known him for years. When yeah. did you ever know him be yeah. bashful? Yeah, right. <laughs> Duplicated at all. There was a certain atmosphere of the time. Hold on, kids. My children just arrived home from school. You <laughs> called that. You, you said they'd be background. coming in. That's perfect. Um, I heard somebody say, hey, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so where were we? Oh, we're talking about Woodstock. Yeah. I, I don't think it can be... Yeah, a few years ago, I began to realize that uh, we were poisoning the very air that we breathe and the very soil that grows our food and the very water that we drink. 
And uh, it doesn't take a brilliant man to realize that if we continue down that path, that uh, things are going to get very, very difficult. And I think that humanity right now is at a, a kind of a, a point of no, of no return here. If we don't do something about the pollution on the planet, um, it's going to come back and bite us. And in 1986, I, uh, I put all these thoughts together and, and uh, waited and waited and waited to record the song because I knew that eventually CSNY would get back together. And I wanted this song to find its largest audience. Uh, that song was Clear Blue Skies. Let's hear it now. <laughs> 